Hank Phillippe Ryan, your host for this session. And quickly, I'm the USA Today bestselling author of 12 thrillers, including the newest, The First to Lie, a psychological standalone, and The Murder List, which last night won the Anthony for Best Novel of the Yay. Year. <laughs> Let me introduce our fabulous authors to you now. Christina McDonald, Christina is a USA hi. Today bestselling hi is a USA Today bestselling author of Do No Harm, Behind Every Lie, and The Night Olivia Fell, which has been optioned for television by a major Hollywood studio. Originally from Seattle, Washington, she has a master's in journalism from the National University of Ireland, Galway, and now lives in London with her husband, two sons, and their dog, Tango. We also have Asma Zahanat Khan. Asma is, holds a PhD in international human rights law with a specialization in military intervention and war crimes in the Balkans. A British-born Canadian and former adjunct law professor, Khan now lives in Colorado with her husband. She writes the award-winning Asa Katak Rachel Getty mystery series and the critically acclaimed Coruscant Archives fantasy series, A Deadly Divide and The Blade Bone are her latest books. Welcome, Asma. Thank you, Hank, so much. It's and great to be here. Welcome to Hannah Mary McKinnon, my dear pal, who was born in the UK and grew up in Switzerland and now lives in Canada with her husband and three sons. She's the author of four novels, including this year's super best-selling psychological thriller, Sister Dear, and she says, Dark and Twisted Endings is her jam. And finally, Angie Kim. Hi, Angie. The author of the international bestseller and Edgar winner, Miracle Creek named a best book of the year by Time, The Washington Post, Kirkus, and The Today Show. A Korean immigrant, former trial lawyer, and mother of three boys, she's a contributor to Vogue, The New York Times Book Review, Washington Post, and numerous literary magazines. So welcome all. You can see that we have such a stellar array of authors here today, and I can't wait for you to meet them all. So quickly, before we break into the breakout rooms, um, we're going to play a quick game of 20 or so questions. The back room has these special cards with questions. I totally want those cards. They're like <laughs> playing game, playing cards. They're <laughs> awesome. Okay, for you, um, Asma, what have you learned about yourself from being a writer? I have learned that the single thing that motivates me most is the absolute terror of a deadline. <laughs> <laughs> This book must be done by such and such time to get out on the proper publication date. So that's a that's been a salutary lesson for me. I've always been very deadline driven um, and really, really. Uh, I've been writing two books a year for the last five years, and without those deadlines, I think my whole world would have fallen apart. So I guess that's the most important lesson for me. A question for Hannah: How lo Hannah, how long have you been writing? Not today, just in general. <laughs> I wrote my first novel that was published time after time uh, in 2000, end of 2011, 2012, and it got published in 2016. So yeah, um, coming up for a decade, I guess. Isn't that crazy? Doesn't it seem like we're new? It does. It, do it does. Yeah. Wait, Hannah, so did you, were, was that like the beginning of your writing career? So you hadn't done like, you, you're not one of these people who's been like secretly wanted to be writing since you were four years old or something. Oh my God, Hannah, no. you and I are the same. I'm so happy to meet you. You're like the only <laughs> writer I've met who isn't like, oh yes, I really? always knew oh, I wanted no, to be a writer. No. no. It, was not at all. it was all about business and, uh, and uh, a career business career yeah which i had awesome. and then cool. and then and then i came to writing so yeah angie what's the most difficult thing about writing a book oh um uh, actually writing for sure um i don't like writing i'm not sure how i became a writer when i don't like writing i i, I of <laughs> course i love writing in one way um but I find it very, very difficult and I'm really, really slow at it. And um, the most difficult thing is resisting the temptation to procrastinate, which I am like, if there were a world champion of procrastination, I am positive that I would be in contention. <laughs> and so it's just really, really hard. Once I've written something down, I love editing and I think that that's my strength but actually writing something, I'm just like, oh, I don't really know what to do. So, Christina, when do you feel the most creative? 
when when do you feel the most creative i think i think naturally i feel the most creative um first thing in the morning um i can write in the evening if i have to and i quite often do because i have kids and and they have to get to school and then i have to do dinner and all that stuff so i do sometimes write in the evenings but most naturally it's best for me to wake up with a really fresh mind that isn't clogged by all of the the, the, the stuff that goes along with being a mom and working full time and, you know, just just life, you know, even commuting, even the commute to, to take my kids to school, it just clogs my mind with like just stuff. And so I feel if I could just roll out of bed and have a cup of tea waiting for me or coffee and like be at my desk, that would be that would be the best. <laughs> so I think first thing in the morning. Just to, you all are terrific and we could do this forever, but let's talk about your, every, each of you has brought a book that you want to recommend because as we know, we all need to have our to be read piles get even <clears throat> higher than they are. So um, Hannah, what book are you recommending? I have Little Secrets by Jennifer Hillier. Aww, now, aww, I love it, that book. It's brilliant. It came out in April. Um, so this year so it's about a woman who or a couple and their five-year-old four-year-old boy Sebastian is taken at a Christmas market by a guy dressed in a Santa suit which must be just the most evil thing she could have thought of and it's a year later and um, Marin the the protagonist she finds out that her husband is having an affair with a younger woman and she decides that that's a problem she can fix. So she hires a hit person to oh. get rid of them. As one does, right? Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Asma, Asma, how about you? So the book I picked to promote or recommend is called The Beauty of Your Face by Seher Mustafa. And it came out this year, I think in April. It's simply gorgeous. It's the story about a Palestinian American woman who is carrying a lot of historical and cultural trauma, but also personal family trauma. Her mother is mentally ill and her sister just disappears and vanishes out of her life. And she can't, uh, and, and the heroine, her name is Afaf. Afaf can't find her feet. She can't find any solid ground in her life. She's lost, she's struggling, she's self-hating. But then she finds this sisterhood of women in this community who help her build herself back up. She finds a wonderful man to marry. She becomes the principal of an Islamic school in a suburb in Chicago. And then there's a school shooting in that school by uh, a man with white supremacist leanings. And he's this unnamed character. And he comes into the school and he starts shooting the girls that she loves and so on. And it's just so rare to see a story about Palestinian American life that brings in all these beautiful intimate aspects of Palestinian culture and history, and then talks about these very current and pressing uh, political issues of racism, our polarized politics, Islamophobia. So it's just gorgeously written, The Beauty of Your Face by Sahar Mustafa. Angie, what about you? Um, okay, so I don't have the actual book. I have an arc, I read an arc of it, um, and I loved it so much I um, loaned it up to a friend. And so, but I pulled up the, the um, cover right here. It's Leave the World Behind by Ruman Alam. And, um, okay, can you guys see? Okay, so anyway, um, this one, yeah, this one is, it doesn't need any endorsement from me because it's got an endorsement from everybody else. It's Read with Jenna Pick. It's um, been shortlisted for the National Book Award already. It's, uh, it just came out a few weeks ago. It's so amazing. And, um, and this is his third novel. And what I love about it is that it invokes sort of the feeling, the helplessness and sort of the chaos of being in the pandemic and in quarantine as we are right now, without actually invoking that precise situation. What happens is this couple takes um, an Airbnb, uh, this family uh, of four people, a couple and um, two kids, um, a white family goes to an Airbnb in Long Island and it's just this gorgeous house like in the middle of nowhere no phone service you know there's like nothing and um, and then they all of a sudden hear about some weird alert about maybe a global uh, no not a global like an east coast um, power outage oh, right, right, and right. then all of a sudden 
they get a knock on their door that night. And it's the owners of the house. And they're a black couple, an older black couple. And, you know, the white family is sort of thinking thoughts like, oh, I didn't realize this house would be owned by a black couple. And so it's got lots of sort of racial tension and assumptions and really great social commentary that makes you think. And at the same time, it's got a dystopian taste to it because you don't know what's happening. What about you? Sure, I... I wanted to recommend um, Kate Moretti. I don't know if anybody can see this, but it's Kate Moretti's new book and it's called Girls of Bracken Hill. And I chose this book just because it's a really fun, sort of creepy, fun, entertaining read for this time of year, you know, as the the days are getting a bit darker and Halloween is coming. And um, and it's basically a gothic mystery with a touch of supernatural. So it's a little bit different than what I would normally read. And, and I found that really fun and really enticing. And it's about a woman who's trying to find out um, what happened to make her sister disappear basically 17 years before. She doesn't know what happened and and her, her memory is just a little bit vague. And so she's on this mission to find out what happened to her sister, where did she go? Um, and, and it just has everything that you kind of want in a story that's creepy at this time of year. It has this really creepy castle with this basement with all these rooms that kind of keep shifting and changing and you don't know if it's, you know, her being a little bit insane or if it's just that the house is maybe a bit haunted and then it has these um these very mysterious townspeople and it has a a a woman who's literally and figuratively haunted by her sister's disappearance and i just found it a really fun read wasn't that fun we hope you enjoyed that taste of what a back room session is like but more fun comes immediately afterward that's when the audience is broken up into four breakout rooms, and each author, in turn, visits each room. We'd love to show you what a breakout session is like, because those relaxed face-to-face conversations between best-selling authors and readers are the hallmark of backroom events. But breakout sessions are never recorded, because what's said in the backroom stays in the backroom. room. <laughs>